You hear that? You hear that playing in the background? That's my jam right there. Yeah, that's right. Katusha. Uh, uh, uh. Come and saw bro here today with Revolution Under Siege. That's right. This game is from Matrix Games and Asiad and Slytherin. And I gotta say, normally I'm not a fan of Asiad. I'm gonna just, you know, go ahead and be clear about that. But this game is actually a lot of fun. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a pretty in-depth learning curve that, you know, you gotta put in some time, undoubtedly, to really learn and enjoy this game. And even then, I'm like 10 to 20, to like 10 to 15 hours in, and I still feel like I haven't quite grasped a lot of the concepts of the game. But, you know, I'm not trying to scare you away, because this game is worth learning. From what I've played so far, it's a hell of a lot of fun. So, without further ado, let's actually take a look at this game, shall we? It's funny, because this is about the fourth time I've tried to record this game, and I keep making mistakes. Or <laughs> it's all on my end, but anyway. So this is going to be a really short review on the game. I'm not really going to show a lot of gameplay, because with these types of games, it's really hard to show gameplay. Uh, so instead, I'm going to talk about a lot of really cool features that are in this game that I really, really like, and why I think that this game is definitely something that any Grand Strategist fan... Uh, is going to have a freaking ball with. I will say this is the first Asiad game that I have come to love. That is kind of a big deal. I am not a fan of Asiad. Uh, I think their games can be overly complicated. But this one, if you if you are willing to actually sit down and give it the chance to learn the mechanics, you are going to have a ball. The best example I can think of, is for you board game enthusiasts out there, or anybody who's ever actually sat down and played Axis and Allies at least once, you know that when you first play Axis and Allies, you have to spend like 45 minutes to an hour setting up the board. It takes a lot of time, and when you finally get it set up and you're looking at the board, you're like, holy crap. <laughs> There's so much going on here. And... There most certainly is. Now, this game, obviously, it those are the feelings that you get when you first pop it open. It's very intimidating. You know, it's 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 kind of scary looking at like all this stuff. Like, oh my god, am I really gonna play this? And do I really have to learn how to play this? And yes, yes, you do. This is a game that you will be so happy that you took the time to go through all the tutorials to go and read the game manual. It comes pre. It's pre there on the launcher. You can click on it and read all up in, uh, about the game, and the, the, the developers have provided literally encyclopedias worth of information to help you understand the game, because there's no doubt in my mind, it's very, it's not complicated, the way the game actually plays is pretty simplistic, however, when you're actually understanding what all the stats mean, some of them are obvious, like, like offensive fire, defensive fire, initiative, range, rate of fire, that stuff is obvious. But then you start kind of getting into a little bit more confusing stuff. Like, okay, police, zero? Well, I wonder what that means. Does that mean they, is that some sort of morale, lo loyalty bonus that they have on the area? You know, and, and like, for example, just looking at the screen without any type of, you know, uh, uh, reference to go by if you weren't looking at the manual, if you hadn't read the manual, you know, what is seniority, what is politics, so on and so forth. Unless you go through the tutorial, unless you read the game manual, you're not going to really have an idea of what's going on here in this game. So, first off, I do want to make that very clear. If you want to enjoy this game at its fullest, go play the tutorial, go read the manuals, or if there's somebody who's putting out you know, tutorials on how to play the games on YouTube, go watch that guy. I will say right now, I'm not going to be that guy because there's so much to this game that um, <laughs> that I would have a hard time explaining it in a video. So, there's only a couple things I'm going to show off. For example, I'm going to show you exactly, I'm going to give you a brief overview of combat. Uh, for example, here we have a army. This is my main army led by Cherbachev uh, and 
it's got a power, an army power of 960. Now, that's actually with a minus 35% penalty uh, due to the fact that the command of all these officers in command here isn't enough uh, for the entire army. That's how big this army is. So pretty much I get a minus 35% penalty. As you can see by the three bars here, my army is pretty much resupplying and whatnot. You can actually go right here and you can see uh, you know, what your maximum ammunition capacity and uh, what the usage per battle is and so on. And then you can see more, more of like your hide value, your detection values and so on. Uh, and then you have over here, you've got basically, this is probably one of my favorite things about this game too, is the fact that you've got different postures for your army. Essentially what a posture would be is like an assault posture. Uh, if you're reading that little tooltip down there, this means that the enemy structure encountered at the end of a movement will be assaulted without sieging it. If you need to assault all structures encountered while moving, you must set the ROE of the stack to all out attack. Now when we do that, That'll give us, you know, various options to how do, how do we want to do our assault posture? Uh, do we want to do an all-out attack? Basically, by doing an all-out attack, you know, losses are increased on both sides. Retreat cr retreat chances have been reduced for the rest of the day for both sides, um, and essentially, it's the only way to take down forts while still, you know, while still moving without sieging them. However, if you want to take a more kind of defensive posture, we can go over here, pick defensive posture, uh, and again, if you're reading the tooltip, you won't engage the enemy in the region, allow them to pass by, but if you are attacked, the terrain can provide some advantage. You will not gain any ground uh, by defending against an enemy, even if you have the upper hand in the battle. But you can choose how you want to defend. Do you just want to defend and retreat? Your side will want to retreat starting with the third round unless the attack is failing. And the chances to succeed in doing so are increased. Or do you want to hold at all costs? So your guys won't try to retreat at all. You'll take massive, absolutely massive casualties. But you know, that could be the difference between you losing the battle and winning the battle. By your men actually bravely, bravely holding down the line. There's different brigades in the game, for example. If we go over here to reinforcements, uh, and these are all replacements that you can actually recruit, let's take a look at, do, 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 do. well, we're the Western Whites, so these are some of the choice, unit choices we have to go with. Uh, World War, you know, basically elite infantry, line infantry, light infantry, raiders, militia, light vehicles, cavalry, light artillery, boats, I'm just going <laughs> to, planes, more planes, more boats. This is all boats and planes. Like, and you can get like armored trains and stuff like that. Supply trains, service assists, engineers, so on and so forth. And ooh, heavy artillery. I'm gonna recruit that. But um, anyway, so there's a lot of choices as for units. You can even, like I said, recruit units from different nations depending on the side you choose. The Reds obviously aren't gonna be able to recruit units from the United States of America. However. Uh, the Western Whites were supported by many Western countries and their bid to overthrow uh, Lenin's recently established uh, Soviet Union. So, yes, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot going on here. And, of course, um, as per Asiad's previous attempts, um, they, they're very, very historically accurate games. You've got pictures that, while some are hand-drawn and whatnot, Quite a few of them are actual pictures of actual leaders and so on who were involved uh, in the actual fighting. I love that touch. That's a nice touch. Another really nice touch is if you go to objectives and scores, it shows you exactly how many prisoners and losses you have. Uh, for example, we've taken in the in the war we fought so far, we've taken 5,500 prisoners. However, we've lost 20,867 men. However, our opponents, the Reds, the Eastern Whites, and so on. Well, the Eastern Whites are on our side, so they're not our opponents. But the Reds, for example, have lost 114,000 men. So the Reds are taking heavy casualties. And I can even agree with that statement based on the fighting they've been engaged in in my territory alone. However, I am starting to lose uh, in, in my engagements. Let me, let me point that out. Like I have, This is the farthest I've gained land is up here to Balashov. And if you come down here, I actually pushed the Reds all the way to Alista and all the way down to Stavropol. As you can see how the lines are kind of messed up. And they pushed me back. They pushed me all the way back. 
uh, with these mass two massive armies that they have here, and they came in and just split everything. It's great. <laughs> and even then, you've got like you know you've got like politics here. You see, so you've got home politics, which basically they each one of these these they're pretty much events that you can enact if you for for a certain cost. Um, uh, for example, this one costs 20 engagement points. Engagement points are right up here. They're pretty much like your diplomatic points from Hearts of Iron. Um, you know, you've got diplomacy where we can do the White Fleet in the Baltic Sea. And it's uh, everything has a cost, but everything has a positive uh, uh, gain from it. For example, here, a tank of drone in Tagarong. Uh, minus three engagement points, minus eight war supply, minus thirty rubles, but you get plus two tank units in the factory region, um, or or industrialization in Sevastopol, you get plus five to war supply, plus fifty uh, per turn, uh, plus two unit replacement for each type of ground and naval unit except for tanks, so on. But it costs minus fifteen engagement points, minus ten percent war supply, and minus fifty rubles. So there's a lot going on in this game. And like I said, there's like there's plenty plenty of options to choose from, like in terms of events. You have random officers pop up as the revolution continues on between these two forces. Um, it gets crazy, and it's so much fun. Like I am, I'm quite in love with this game. If I do say so myself, this is a very very well done game. And I am I'm already a fan. And this actually makes me want to go and play other Asiad games to you know to kinda of to see what I've been missing out on. Because like I said in the past, I've not been a fan of Asiad. I felt like in the past it's a little complicated. You can't just kinda of pick it up and start playing it like you can games like Hearts of Iron or even Making History, which relatively speaking, those games can be picked up and understood. However, I'm so happy that um, Slytherin and Matrix Games provided me a, a review copy of this game and allowed me to really spend my time understanding this game, you know, getting getting the the finer points and bits of it, and really truly enjoying it because this is this is phenomenal. This is grand strategy at its finest, if you ask me. Now, of course, there's a couple problems here or there. But honestly, they're minuscule. And even like the soundtrack for the game is phenomenal. Like how I showed in the beginning of the video, uh, Katusha. That's, uh, that's great that they actually got the old version of that song. And, uh, you know, they've got a lot of like, you know, pre-Soviet Union music going. But they've also got Soviet Union music going. It's really cool. There's been a lot of effort and love put into this game. And I am definitely a fan. And oh, go look at this guy all the way up here in Archangelus. But yeah, I am definitely a fan of uh, Asiad. And now I gotta say, after playing this game, I really, really came to enjoy their stuff. But like I said, there there are problems, specifically the steep learning curve. I mean, you're not gonna get around that. You've got to be willing to put in the time to learn to play the game. Um, I would say you'll have a pretty good grasp on it about three to four hours in. Like you'll understand mostly how these games work. If you've ever played one, an Asiad game before, I'm sure you'll pick it up faster than that. Uh, like I said, as somebody who hasn't, and somebody who's pretty much I've the most I've ever put into an Asiad game, I think was about three hours. So, uh, you know, I didn't really I didn't really give it a chance. And see, that's kind of like with these games, you've got to be able to sit down and give it a chance. And I think you'll come to actually really enjoy it uh, for all it's worth. But anyway, this has been Commissar Bro giving kind of, uh, you know, just a narrated review of, uh, you know, Revolution Under Siege, the Russian Civil War. This is a fun game, and I highly suggest it to any Grand Strategy fans, anybody who's a fan of making history of Hearts of Iron who's willing to sit down and learn how to play the game. I really do think you'll enjoy this and I think that uh, you'll probably, you'll get a kick out of it like I have because I can tell you right now, I'm I'm very much dwelled into this, 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 the revolution as it were. I'm getting my ass kicked, mind you, but I'm enjoying it nonetheless. So anyway, this has been Kamisa Bro and I will see you next time.